So you're thinking about receiving a cortisone injection, but want to learn a little bit about what the side effects may be. In this video, I'm going to break down step by step the different side effects that one can experience from a cortisone injection. For those who don't know me, my name is Dr. Sona, and I'm an interventional sport medicine doctor up here in Canada. Now, a very common area of my practice is that I perform a number of joint and tendon injections with cortisone, and because of that, I discuss the benefits and the risks and the side effects day in and day out. Informed consent is very important. And this is why I'm creating this video, so that you can have this information I share with my patients as well. Okay, so let's start by reviewing some of the most common side effects that we can see from cortisone injections. Number one, bleeding. So the risk of bleeding is very minimal, but anytime you perform an injection to the skin, there's always risk of bleeding. Now, we use different size needles for different areas of the body, so it naturally makes sense that our thicker, larger needles have a higher risk of bleeding than our thinner and shorter ones. Now, the most important thing is really whether or not someone is on a, uh, an anticoagulant of some sort who has a, a bleeding disorder. That will increase the risk of bleeding. And when I mean bleeding, I do mean bleeding kind of into the area that we injected, so into the joint or into the tendon. It is rare to see this, but it tends to happen a little bit more often in people who aren't blood thinners. So it is something to be aware of and make sure that you are counseled against as well. Number two, infection. So anytime we inject into the body, we are introducing a needle in a sterile environment. So risk of in infection is truly there. Now the risk I quote people is around one in 10,000, although this will change depending on a patient's health. For example, our older and a more immune compromised patients may be at a higher risk of infection. So the signs of infection, I always counsel people on, don't tend to present until five to 10 days after the injection, mainly because it takes that level of time for bacteria to grow. Now, what are these signs? Think extreme pain, lots of redness, lots of swelling, and a fever. If you have any of those, definitely contact your provider or go to the emergency department. Number three, post-injection flare-up. So this is actually a common side effect that people may experience with cortisone, and approximately 10% of my patients tell me that their pain does get considerably worse for one or two days and then gets better. That is actually normal in 10% of people, and what it is is that they have a post-injection flare-up to cortisone. So there are molecules and beads in the cortisone itself, and the body is just reacting to it while it's trying to digest this. This doesn't have any long-term effects, and people still get the benefits of the injection. It's just more pain for one or two days, and that responds nicely to Tylenol and Advil. Number four, effects to the cartilage. So there is some evidence coming out that repetitive cortisone injections into joints isn't great for the cartilage. Now, when we do a joint injection, we're treating osteoarthritis in many cases. And we are starting to learn that more and more and more subsequent injections into the joint can actually help progress osteoarthritis and the cartilage degradation a bit further. This is important because that means that we don't want to be injecting young, healthy joints often, if at all. And as people get older, we still wanna be able to limit it because we don't want to actually potentiate the rate of osteoarthritis formation. So in many cases, we wanna limit our injections to approximately one every four months and no sooner. Some doctors will do it every three months, but usually my rule is up to three times a year. Now on that note of joint irritation, one of the very rare side effects to a cortisone injection is avascular necrosis in a joint. Now this can happen due to bisphosphonates for osteoporosis, other oral pain medications, oral prednisone by mouth, due to trauma or even just to due to no reason at all. AVN is a serious condition where by the blood flow to the end of the bone that creates the joint essentially ceases to exist and that actual bone starts to crumble and break down, which is one part of the joint. And what can happen is you have extreme pain, limited range of motion, and people will often need either emergency surgery or a joint replacement if this was to occur. So while this is an extremely rare side effect, it is quite severe. Number five, short-term muscle and tendon weakness. So cortisone injections into areas of muscles and tendons, there is some evidence that the actual muscle and tendon will be weaker for a short period of time. So I am very careful when I inject cortisone into muscles, tendons, into the shoulder bursas, that I tell people that take it easy for about a week to up to two weeks and try to increase load slowly thereafter. The reason why is I don't want them to lift too much too quickly and then cause further damage to the tendon. I tend to be more conservative than other physicians, but usually I make those recommendations based on the literature and the research that I've seen. Now the most common areas that you can see tendon damage or rupture is the plantar fascia area and the Achilles tendon. Because of this, I hardly ever inject these two areas with cortisone, and I really exhaust my other injection options first. Number six, systemic side effects. 
So cortisone does have bloodborne side effects as it is a drug. And when we inject it, approximately 5% of the drug will get absorbed into the bloodstream. Now, because of that, you'll see some side effects or you can see some side effects in patients, mainly increases in blood pressure, which will result in feeling unwell, some palpitations, even a headache, and increases in blood sugar. Some of my diabetic patients have told me that their blood sugar numbers are off anywhere from one to two weeks, so it can last a little bit, so it's always good to make sure you check these numbers after you receive a cortisone injection. Good news is this is transient and it, they do return back to your baseline within one to two weeks. Number seven, skin thinning and hypopigmentation. So when you perform cortisone injections closer to the skin, one of the known side effects of the medication is that it can actually thin out the skin as well as cause whitening of the skin, also known as hypopigmentation. It tends to be the most common in injections that are very superficial or close to the skin. So think your tennis elbows and think a decreervins tenosynovitis, a tendonitis in your wrist. I will counsel patients on this because this is actually something that we will see in practice, mainly because of how close this injection is to the top part of the skin. So this is a brief summary of some of the most common and also some of the most important rare side effects that you need to be aware of with cortisone. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list and the list of side effects will be enormous, but this is with any drug. These are just the most important ones that I've learned to discuss with my patients in practice. If you have any questions or comments about this, leave this down below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. For now, that's all.